I'm here today, everyone, with Representative Maida Townsend. Maida is a colleague of mine and one of my very favorite representatives who is always optimistic, always hardworking, <laughs> and someone who at the State House just has a great uh, reputation for being a hard committee worker. So Maida Townsend, welcome. You're a South Burlington representative, and how are things in South Burlington? Uh, this morning, a little rainy, <laughs> but otherwise, <laughs> Um, things in South Burlington are always great. Good, good. And Maida, I, I should say, um, this has been a very challenging campaign season. You're someone who has a reputation for having endless energy, knocking on every door, not just once, but maybe even twice throughout a summer and fall. How well, is three campaigning times. going? Three, three, three times? Three. <laughs> yeah. How is campaigning going for you this year? Does it feel different to be at social distance here? Oh, it's it's... Um, not comfortable at all because we can't go door to door. Yeah. At this point in time, I already would have been to every one of my doors twice. Once with uh, my end of session report and then with a campaign piece since this is a campaign year. But without being able to go door to door, it's just not happening. And it, it pains me deeply. It really does because I so value being able to talk with my people. Yeah. It, I have, however, been doing a lot of walking all through the pandemic, a lot of walking on different routes all through my district. And I've been able to have really good chats with folks across their yards, oh, great. on either side of the street, you know, and uh, we found, we have found ways to connect uh, in, in very real terms, not virtual terms. Um, but I, I really miss very, very deeply being able to go to every single door. Doesn't yeah. feel right at all. Well, it's not right. <laughs> right, well, and when I used to knock doors in Essex, it was one of my favorite parts of the job because you yes. have this incredible exchange. And of course, not everyone wants to talk politics, but almost everyone, if they get the chance to, will share something that's important to them. And so I've always yes. found that to be valuable. And, and particularly in this time, so I should introduce here that Meta is a member of the House Appropriations Committee, which is one of the 14 standing committees of the House that works on building our state budget. And every year, Vermont passes a balanced budget. And Maida, I was just wondering, could you share a little bit about that process and what it's like to be a member of that committee that works on the annual budget process? Well, first of all, it's great to be part of that committee. Uh, and it's a good thing that I really love hard work, which I do. I love to work very, very hard and to be challenged intellectually. And certainly, um, House Appropriations does that. Um, it's, imp it's important for folks to understand that um, Vermont uh, is the only state, I believe, in the entire nation that does not have a statute mandating a balanced budget, um, but we nonetheless do so uh, with regularity because that's what we do in Vermont. It's called fiscal responsibility, accountability, that sort of thing. Uh, and we are so focused on maintaining a balanced budget that every year, um, every year when we go back into session, we do what's called the Budget Adjustment Act because it's halfway through a fiscal year and it's time to do a true up to see if some parts of the budget have been underutilized or overutilized or something totally unforeseen has occurred that has seriously wrenched the budget one way or the next. And we true up, we recalibrate and we ultimately pass through the chambers and send to the governor what, what is called the Budget Adjustment Act of whichever fiscal year we happen to be in. The budget process is not common knowledge, but you've explained it well. Essentially, we pass a one-year budget that runs from July 1 through June 30 of the following year. Yes. And each year in the middle of the winter, when we gather in, at the State House in January, we do an adjustment. But tell us a little bit about how that uh, process has been changed by COVID, because we've done something very different this year. Yes. We've passed a first quarter budget. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. But Well, before we could even pass the first quarter budget, we had to readjust the fiscal year 20 budget, which, which we did. Um, and just very quickly, because it informs the way we had to approach the phase one, uh, 21 budget, um, for the... Uh, second budget adjustment for fiscal year 20, what we did first was look at a series of adjustments which the administration brought to us. Um, they were adjustments, some of them uh, were because there was underutilization in certain 
um, functions of government or uh, in one instance, there was actually more revenue coming in than had been anticipated. In any case, they brought to us what was approximately $52 million worth of adjustments that had no negative impact on individuals or programs. And um, that 52 million basically covered the um, hole, which was virtually instantaneously created by the pandemic. The money just disappeared when we had to lock down, um, for all intents and purposes, state government. It nonetheless left hanging out there approximately $143 million um, in lost revenue because various of the taxes, the income tax, sales and uh, sales rooms and meals, the payment of those taxes, which are a huge piece of state revenue, those had been deferred to, oh, July 15th, right. a, a date that we just went past. Um, so we had to figure out how we were going to recalibrate, balance that the end of year, the closeout of fiscal year 20. We had the 52 million to take care of the quote unquote disappeared money thanks to this pandemic, but we still had hanging out there what to do with regard to the whole made by deferred revenues. And we had to decide whether to drain our reserves or borrow from um, the coronavirus, the uh, Corona Relief Fund, borrow, understanding it would be paid back. And we got signals out of Washington that it would be acceptable if we were borrowing, we weren't using, we were borrowing to pay back that amount, um, which was the direction we went. Um, but it, it was a very unusual budget adjustment to, yeah. to finish out fiscal year 20. And immediately, I mean, it, it was literally from one day to the next, we had to pivot and start on phase one of uh, the fiscal year 21 budget. And it was only phase one because of those deferred revenues, those deferred tax dollars, which weren't due in until the middle of July. Um, and we, have, we could not, with a straight face, put together a budget for the full year of fiscal year 21 without knowing what was going to be coming in from those revenues. Would all of those re deferred revenues be coming in? Only a portion. What might be happening out of Washington right. with regard to ad additional support or lack thereof? Um, all of these unknowns. So we focused on uh, focused on phase one only, and that's why we need to come back as a legislature in August uh, to deal with several issues uh, relating to state government. But from uh, the perspective of um, appropriations, we have to be putting together the full year budget for FY21. Uh, well, Maida, it's, it's really complex, and that's always the takeaway when we talk about this budget process, but the complexity this year with COVID is even greater. And what you're describing with having to deal with a first quarter budget so that we can actually see what the revenues have done in terms of performance, while at the same time giving the administration some time to bring to us their best proposals about how yeah. to address uh, the budget challenge that we're in. Um, there's a complexity there, but it also makes a lot of sense. We essentially have provided ourselves some time to get more information in. And I think one of the key things to share with Vermonters is that the budgeting process in Vermont is really based upon the best available data we can get. We look at all yes. the experience, we take testimony, we hear from Vermonters about their priorities, and we try through that mm -hmm. to bring both the realities of the financial crunch that we're in into alignment with the values of what Vermonters want to see. And so your Correct. job is gonna be very challenging as you move forward, but we're grateful that you're there and that you're really working to dial in and understand what's happening. Because what we know, and I'd love for you to speak to this, is that the next nine months of that budget is gonna be extremely important because more uncertainty is likely to come. So you, can you just give us a snapshot of what may lie ahead once we complete the budget for fiscal 21? What does that process look like potentially in the winter as we return to session in January? Well, um, that is extremely hard to answer actually because of all of the unknowns which surround us. We have no idea if there's going to be another, you know, another surge 
of the virus and what impact that may or may not happen on how we are living, um, both as individuals as well as in terms of you know, larger communities and the businesses and all. Um, for sure, um, we'll be keeping an eye on how the revenues come in and what those sources are. And we'll have to be dealing with, at the beginning of uh, January, that is the norm, quote unquote normal time to be doing a budget adjustment anyway. It will be the, the point at which we will have a solid set of data behind us to assess to assess where we need where we need to put more support. It could be everywhere. I, I think that we quite potentially will see a stunning level of need mm. uh, out there. St a stunning level of need uh, across the board. Um, and it's only through working together. That's one way that I, I, I so value the, the way we do work here in Vermont, that uh, generally speaking, people see the problem. We might have different ways of coming at solving the problem, but bottom line, when all is said and done, we work together um, and, and we don't engage in, um, we don't identify, we, we don't engage in just sort of, if I may, knee-jerk position taking and holding to that without everyone giving to, to work through to find the, um, to, to find the solution. I have to say, as an example, two examples, as we work through um, the second budget adjustment for FY20 and the phase one budget for 21, Goodness gracious, if anybody, you know, talk about a stressful situation, mm. there could have been people being really, really cranky and, and, uh, and difficult with one another throughout both of those processes. And it simply did not happen. Doesn't mean that everybody was walking in lockstep, but everybody understood we've got this problem and we need to, we need to solve it for the people of the state because there's a world of hurt out there. Well, there, there is, and, and really the other piece here that's so critical is that we have to operate here in Vermont with what we get from the federal government because we are in a crisis position and that leadership in Washington, depending on what happens this yeah. summer and fall is gonna be critical. They're scheduled to go on recess in August. There yeah. may be additional supports coming, but in Vermont, we take care of one another. And so I just, I wanna thank you and everyone else. And I wanna thank you for highlighting that. In Vermont, we try to work together to find solutions. And we're gonna to have to do that now more than ever, particularly if what you said is true, that those needs could spike. And I know that's the worst case that we're all fearing and that we're all bracing for. But if that happens, um, you know, certainly I feel grateful that we have people like you who are looking out to try and to- And you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You know, but really focusing on how do we get the best value and the most effective programming, but also how do we take care of folks to make sure no one falls behind? Yes. This is not a moment of anyone's doing, and we need to take care of one another. So I know Absolutely. you're going to be there fighting the good fight, which we're grateful for. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and, and I should add, too, lest it be forgotten, we, we have held in reserve some of the uh, corona money, which came via the CARES Act to Vermont, part of that $1.25 billion has been reserved so that we may be put that to be best use when we enter into our discussions in August, once we're able to see how things have been shifting right. um, since, right. since we adjourned. Yeah. Um, ab absolutely. There's already over a billion dollars out there to the communities, to individuals, to businesses, um, su supporting people across this state. Over a billion dollars in COVID money we were able to put out. And, um, and we, we will move on doing the best we can to, to help folks across the, the state. Yeah. Well, Mina, I, I want to thank you for taking some time to chat with me this morning. I know you're very busy and that you have a lot going on. And I know that uh, for what it's worth is I've talked to folks in South Burlington. I had a community meeting that someone hosted on Zoom last night 
And uh, oh. folks had nothing but good things to say about you as a state representative. Oh. And I actually, I visited. That's very nice. Yeah, well, I visited with, uh, <laughs> with our state's attorney, Sarah George, recently. And we were talking about the South Burlington reps. And she said, no one works harder than Maida Townsend. She has a reputation for knocking on every door twice. So, you know, certainly it sounds like it's even three times. So we got to spread the word about that. But I, I just want to thank you for your service and made to tell you how grateful I am to have you uh, supporting me in my candidacy for state Senate. It really means a lot to have leaders of your caliber behind me. And just I'm grateful for the support. Uh, I hope we can work together. And as we move forward, I'm really hopeful uh, that we will be able to find ways during this crisis to take care of one another. And I know you share that value. Yeah. It's something I'm Absolutely. grateful for as a colleague. Absolutely. Yeah, great. All right, Maida. Well, look, I don't want to take any more of your time, but thank you so much for joining here. And I look forward to chatting soon. I'll be seeing you and hopefully we'll be knocking on each other's doors at some point. We'll see. Oh, that would be wonderful. Wonderful. You take care.